The proceeding will start shortly. 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 The proceeding will start shortly.
The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. The proceeding will start shortly. Report of the European Union Notification of Withdrawal Bill for Bridges of Headley. <coughs> My Lords, I beg to move that this report be now received. The, quest the question is that this report be now received. As many of that opinion will say content, content. the contrary not content, the contents have it. In Clause 1, Amendment 1, Lord Newby. It, it, it may be downhill all the way uh, from this point, but my lords, this is a very straightforward amendment uh, which would require any Brexit deal to be put to the people to approve or reject. It is based on the principle that, having asked the people whether they wish to initiate the Brexit process, only the people should take the final decision. In asking the people to do this, we are not sidelining Parliament. Parliament should clearly debate and vote on all the options at the end of the negotiating process, as we will be discussing later today. But Parliament was completely at odds with the views of the people in advance of the referendum. And if Parliament took a decision which went against the majority popular view, having given the people the initial decision-making role in the process, I think that we would be faced with widespread and justifiable anger which would be corrosive to our national life for many years to come. May I begin by thanking the noble Lord Lord Brokoff for his drafting advice which he so generously gave me at committee stage. <laughs> I, I, I hope that he feels uh, that even if he can't agree with the amendment before us, it at least avoids some of the shortcomings he saw in its predecessor. 
I'm grateful for that generous tribute. Um, uh, I, wonder if, uh, I wonder if uh, Lord Newby could uh, advise us as to whether the referendum that he's proposing uh, is an advisory referendum or a mandatory referendum. <laughs> My Lord, I, I think we've already seen um, that the referendum which we had um, has been taken as a decisive referendum. Parliament, Parliament did not decide um, uh, that uh, it should look at it as merely advisory. Um, I think any referendum uh, has to be seen uh, as a decisive uh, referendum and, and uh, to the extent to the extent uh, that it requires Parliament uh, to act on the basis of it. I wonder if uh, the noble Lord could answer my question uh, in relation to the conduct of the referendum, because I uh, was unhappy about the previous referendum because 16 and 17 year olds yep. were not allowed to vote, yeah, yeah. because EU citizens were not allowed to vote, yeah, yeah, yeah. and because there was no threshold. In his referendum, which of those three would be included, if any of them? Because otherwise, I would have some serious doubts about having a referendum without those three uh, particular points being taken account of. Well, my lords, the, the, the noble lord will recall the uh, attitude we took uh, when, it was, when we were discussing the previous referendum. We strongly believe uh, that 16 and 17 year olds should get the vote, not just in referendums, uh, but more generally. I think the. Uh, Would the noble lord kindly address the House rather than Lord Foops, because we can't hear what he's saying on the side. I'm, I, I apologise. Um, what I was saying was that when we discussed this previously in respect of the referendum which we've just had, uh, we argued strongly that 16 and 17 year olds should get the vote. But the details uh, of any future referendum would have to be discussed in the, in the context of a new uh, referendum bill, which Parliament ha would have to uh, pass uh, to trigger uh, a further referendum. My well, Lord, um, if I might make uh, a little progress. Uh, since committee stage, um, I've had the chance to read the speeches of the noble Baroness Lady Smith uh, and the noble Lord, Lord Bridges. The noble Baroness's view was that referenda are best avoided and that the deal at the end of the Brexit process will be far too detailed and complicated to leave to the people to decide. <laughs> However, she went on, if, as time and negotiations progress, there is genuine evidence of a widespread demand for a second referendum, that should be listened to. My Lords, I suppose that I should be grateful for this willingness to keep an open mind, but I simply don't think it goes far enough. My Lord, the Minister said that a confirmatory referendum should not be contemplated because trust in politicians was so low and that, I quote, there is a sense that Parliament is divorced from day-to-day -day life. Well, my Lords, we know what the Government's response to this has been. It's to try and cut Parliament out of the decision-making process altogether and just take the decisions themselves. And furthermore, the Government has assiduously argued that asking the people to take the final decision on the most important issue facing the country in generations, on, and on which they have already had a say, is anti-democratic. My Lords, this argument simply defies logic. The Minister then said, repeating the White Paper, that people are coming together to make a success of Brexit. It's certainly the case that business is taking decisions based on the assumption of Brexit. That helps to explain why banks are moving thousands of staff outside the UK, why Ford is downsizing its plant at Newport, and Harriet Watt is cutting staff. But this isn't exactly coming together nor are divisions within the country reducing. As I said at second reading, the anger of those who wish to leave the UK, which was evident before the referendum, is now being increasingly matched by those who wish to remain, particularly young people who see their life chances being jeopardised. I'm afraid there is simply no happy consensus 
emerging about the alleged sunny uplands of being outside the EU. Quite the opposite. Labour Lord, he was talking about logic. Could you just tell us exactly, perhaps he's going to come on to this, what would happen were the uh, vote against to be, go his way um, on the second referendum, and if it went one way each, would there then be a third referendum, best of three? Well, I'm, I'm afraid that, that, that uh, argument doesn't do uh, the noble Lord uh, justice, and I'll be coming on to the question uh, of the uh, nature of the vote uh, in a moment. My Lord's reverting to the Minister uh, at uh, committee stage. He, th he said that a further referendum would jeopardise mm. the need for certainty and prayed in aid his concerns for EU citizens living in the UK and UK citizens living in the EU. My Lord, mm. this really is a desperate argument. The Government has it in its hands to deal with the fears of EU nationals living in the UK now. And, as we heard in last week's debate, by doing so, make it more likely that UK nationals living in the EU receive reciprocal treatment. My Lord, the Minister finally talked of a referendum being years ahead on a question we do not know. My Lord, we're not talking about some point in the far future. A short referendum campaign, no longer than a general election campaign, would hardly impinge on the timetable at all. And the government claims to be confident and the government claims to be confident of getting the negotiations completed within the two year period. So we know what sort of time frame we're talking about. And as for the issue of what the question would be about I'm, I'm most grateful I agree with those uh, um, final comments there. But would he not agree that uh, the main duty of parliamentarians we had the Second World War without a referendum, we joined NATO without a referendum, we had the atom bomb without a referendum, we joined the United Nations without a referendum, all those other things with no referenda. Bearing that in mind, isn't it the primordial duty of parliamentarians to restore the true deep sovereignty of the British Parliament, mainly the House of Commons? Well, my Lord, Parliament, on this issue, Parliament sold that pass when it gave the people the decision about whether we stay in the EU or not. Parliament, having given that decision to the people, should accept, it seems to me, in logic, that the people should re retain that decision-making process at the end of the process as well as at the start of it. And that is the nub of the argument I make uh, today. My Lords, to uh, revert to the noble Lord, Lord Robotham and his question, what would the question be about? The question will be very straightforward. It would be, do you prefer the deal done by the government or to remain within the EU? My Lords, I found the noble Lord the Minister's arguments at committee stage unconvincing. I find Lord Roberton didn't ask the question, he just said he asked. He asked why there might not be a third referendum. And could I ask if he can't give an answer to that?